In today's video, I'll be pulling the engine out, replacing the transmission, painting the engine bay, and doing a few other things. So let's get started. Welcome to Texas Honda channel. If you're new here, definitely consider subscribing. So today we're gonna to be pulling the engine and transmission out of the Civic um, because we found a new transmission at the salvage yard that we're gonna to get tomorrow, but we're wanting to take the core with us. So I'm going to pull it out. It's actually a little bit cooler right now than it has been the rest of the day. The sun's finally going down. Uh, if it gets too dark, I'll just use my ring light and drop light to try to give you guys plenty of lighting. But we're basically just gonna pull the engine with the transmission. Then we'll pressure wash the engine bay, that way we can get ready to paint the engine bay the same color as the outside. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna get everything set up and go over some details. I wanna see it, Daddy. I wanna see the recording. This is why I love the quick release on the bumpers. If you ever wonder why I like those quick release bumpers, that's why, because it didn't take very long to take the front bumper off. Uh, I have to have the front bumper off in order to get the chair picker all the way up in there. But uh, yeah, so, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get some light in my tools and uh, put this tripod up. All right, we should have enough lighting. I have the 5,000 lumen um, shop light from Walmart, it costs like 21 bucks. I've got the uh, ring light here in case we need it. And the tripod's over there. So it should be well lit enough for you to see what I'm doing. Um, we have the cherry picker in the back of the pilot. I still have to get that out. But uh, yeah, so what I'm gonna do is disconnect this transmission mount here. There's a T-bracket back there I'll be disconnecting. I'll be disconnecting the driver's side motor mount, taking the AC and power steering off, disconnecting the exhaust, draining the fluids, and pulling the CV shafts out, and then the engine will come out. I'm just gonna do this in a sped up version so that it's not as boring for you guys. and. Uh, and once that's done, I'll go over some more details. All right, we got it all out. We had a couple snags. It was just the uh, shifter cable and the rear T-bracket that was hanging us up. This is the mess we are left with. Uh, not a big deal. I can clean all this up real quick. I'm um, probably gonna lower the car back down. That way it doesn't look all weird with the brakes just hanging out like that. And uh, here's the engine. As you can see, it is entirely together. We'll just remove the 17 millimeter bolts that hold the uh, transmission to the engine. And then there's 10 millimeter bolts that hold the torque converter to the flex plate. We'll just remove all those. We'll take this automatic and we'll put it in the back of the pilot and we'll take it for the core. I did find a manual transmission out there that was already out of the car. So I might just get that and then convert this to manual instead of putting an automatic back in. But that's if it's still out there because parts go really fast out at the salvage yard. So um, if it's still there, we might just go ahead and manual swap it. But if it's not, we'll just throw another auto back in, save up money till I can get the rest of the manual done. All right, so we moved the engine and transmission over there. We got the car lowered back down. Uh, it's back on the wheels, put the bumper back on, and uh, we'll pressure wash the engine bay most likely tomorrow. But I wanted to show you um, right down here, this is the flex plate. And right here was where the 
10 millimeter bolts. There was 10 10 millimeter bolts that hold the flex plate to the torque converter. Now, after you remove each one of these bolts, you can actually turn the uh, crank like this so that you can gain access to them just using a normal 10 millimeter. Um, after you get all those out, you remove the one, two, three, four, five 17 millimeter bolts. Right here, there's one on the back. Um, after you remove all five of those and remove the starter itself, then the transmission will separate from the engine. So it should just pry right apart since we took the 10 millimeter bolts out from the flex plate. Um, so I'll show you that real quick. So that's as simple as it is. Uh, basically just pull it apart. Now we're gonna take this, load it into the pilot, and then we're gonna take this to the uh, salvage yard and use it as a $40 core. So um, hopefully they still have the manual stuff. If they don't, it's not a big deal. I can save up, drive around on an auto, unfortunately. But uh, yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and prep this bay tomorrow so we can get to painting it. But yeah, it'll basically be ready for uh, the auto to manual swap Hopefully, that's still out at the salvage yard. So, I'll uh, be right back. So, so we got back from the salvage yard. I've got the uh, transmission, so this one's supposed to be good. Has a warranty, if not. Um, we couldn't find the manual transmission out there, so I just grabbed this real quick, and we'll just drive around on this, save up money for the manual swap. Uh, I'm going to clean it using this heavy duty oven cleaner you can get at Dollar Tree for a dollar. I got about three of them. We're going to degrease the engine bay and the transmission. So make sure to do this in a well ventilated area because these fumes are really harsh and uh, don't do it by vehicles. All right, so I'm going to let this do its job degreasing. Um, then I'm just going to use the garden hose for now. I'm still waiting on the pressure washer. I'll pressure wash this with the garden hose. And then uh, once we get the actual pressure washer, I'll hit it with the pressure washer if it needs it. But uh, one can goes a long ways. I still have quite a bit left. I'm probably just going to coat it a little bit more. Then I'll let it dry. All right, so it got a lot of it off. Uh, I'll probably coat it one more time, but now we're gonna go rinse the engine bay. All right, using the same oven cleaner I got from Dollar Tree, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, coat the engine bay, trying not to get it on the paint. If it does, it's fine. I still have to wet sand and add one more coat, but uh, this stuff's pretty powerful stuff, so I'll show you how good it degreases. So that worked pretty well. Um, I do still have some spots that need scrubbed. This thing's definitely a lot cleaner than it was. I'll pull all this stuff out. Uh, I'm going to loop the power steering how I typically do because I just prefer without power steering. I don't know, for me it just feels safer. I don't know. I may be weird, but whatever. Um, I have a video on how to loop it, so I'm not going to show you how I loop it. I will put a link in the description for that video though. Uh, I'm going to remove all that crap, scrub everything down, and then we'll uh, get ready for some paint. All right, so I'm going to start prepping the bay. I will be painting it with the Massey Ferguson tractor truck and implement paint, just like the car. Um, just painting the bay with this instead of whipping out the gun and doing all that. It'll help me get into harder to reach places. Um, the camera has been acting up, so I'm hoping that I get this whole process. But if I don't, I am terribly sorry, guys. I can't stand behind the camera and in front of it at the same time. So, so I'm going to go ahead and start tearing stuff out so that I can prep this and get it ready for some paint.
All right, so I'm having some technical difficulties with the camera. I wanted to show you what's going on. Um, this is what I was going to start the video with of the teardown. As you can see, it's just me tearing everything down. And the video ends right there. And then you got this much. And then the video ends. And then this is me um, prepping, ready to paint the bay. I was uh, trying to paint the bay. And it just goes to white screen. As you can see, it just has a recording issue. So I thought, okay, no big deal. I'll just go in and take them off. I click this. And there's only one file. But if you've seen right here, there's three files, one an hour and 12 minutes, 37 minutes, and nine minutes. So I'm sorry I didn't get video of me painting the bay. Um, I've been having some technical difficulties with the recording. I need obviously real equipment, not just iPhones that aren't reliable. So I'm sorry about that guys, um, but the bay is officially painted. Um, I'll go out there and show you what it looks like. I'll be using my wife's iPhone for this. Um, it seems to be a little more reliable. Mine's been through hell and back. But uh, yeah, so I'll be getting more recording equipment here soon. Um, just sorry about all these delays for you guys. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I'll finish this video up with my wife's phone and uh, we'll go out and check the bay out. All right, sorry about the uh, recording issue, everyone. I used this tractor paint, um, painted this bay. This is how I did it. I taped up around the grommets and I taped around the brake booster instead of taking it out this time. Typically I do a lot more time and prep work. I just want to get this back in. We have an inspection coming up. Um, but yeah, I just taped around them like that and any excess overspray that I got on something I didn't like the paint to be on, like for example, this uh, hood rod here, that had a bunch of paint on it. I just wiped it with acetone carefully, not touching anywhere else. But yeah, that's basically the bay. I'm gonna let it dry while we put the engine and transmission together. Um, that way, whenever it's time to drop it in, it should be nice and dry to the touch. Um, we'll have to be very careful not to damage the paint, but if I do damage it, it's spray can, so it's easy to touch up. But this, this'll last, the heat's not gonna be an issue. A lot of people think the heat's gonna be an issue from the engine, even turboed engines. I've never had heat issues with spray paint engine base. So yeah, it looks really good. I'm going to uh, tidy everything up after it dries a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I am terribly sorry about the recording issue, everyone. Uh, I had full intentions of showing you the process of me painting it because that's what I do. But, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and get that transmission mated with the engine so we can get it ready to drop in. All right, so I got the engine back with the transmission. Um, we got it on the cherry picker, so now we're just gonna go ahead and put it in. All right, so I put the headlights in, um, but yeah, the engine's installed now. So all we have to do tomorrow is put the exhaust, the AC compressor, I looped the power steering like I said I would. Uh, the bay looks really good still. We got a little chip in one spot, touched it up with some spray paint so it wasn't a big deal, and it looks awesome. Uh, we'll put the battery in, get everything connected tomorrow, pour fluids in it after the CV shafts go in, and uh, put the exhaust on, we'll be driving this tomorrow. Um, 
it's another late night so I'm gonna call it a night for tonight and do the rest tomorrow um, probably wait till midday since it's gonna be really hot <laughs> and I have no shade so so yeah I'll finish the rest of this up tomorrow so I'm gonna clean my mess up go to bed and I'll uh, see you guys in just a second I didn't do a video of me wire tucking this particular car but I do have a link in the description of me wire tucking another Civic the same year all right so I got the wire tuck done the engines all put back together I did a front slim fan for the condenser for the AC the way I have more room for the turbo um, if you want to see how I did the wire tuck I have another video on that link will be in the description for the wire tuck um, but yeah it's all ready put together uh, fluids are all topped off and it's ready to go down the street so we're gonna go take it for a test drive see if this transmission works and uh, we'll go from there all right so the audio here is a little bit messed up I think it was because either the decibels of the car or the fact that the wind was blowing right on the mic but it doesn't sound very good i'll let you listen to how it sounded but uh we took it for a test drive and it did absolutely great There's no leaks or anything like that. Uh, everything's pretty good. I do have to adjust my idle. It is a little bit high, but uh, otherwise it's it's doing pretty good. So I'd say it was a success. Um, now I do still have some work to do before I turbo it. And I just want to get you guys' honest opinions. Should I turbo the automatic transmission? Um, it'll obviously only be temporary, but, or should I wait till it's auto to manual swapped? Um, leave your comments below what you think I should do with the, uh, turbo whether I should turbo it while it's auto or wait till it's manual obviously it's gonna be a lot quicker with the manual but uh might be fun to see th this one turboed with the automatic but um yeah so I did the automatic turbo on my other channel the James D guy channel um, about four or five years ago and it was all cool and everything but you couldn't tune it so it was kind of pointless we eventually auto to manual swapped it but everything's good solid uh, the bay looks beautiful I mean, it does need a little pressure washing left on the engine, but not a big deal. Um, we'll charge the AC up tomorrow, most likely, because I just don't have any Freon with me, and I don't feel like going and getting any. But I'm going to clean up. I'm going to retire on this video. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, and uh, let me know what you guys think of the progress of the Civic. So I'll see you guys in the next one. God bless.